We named this Who Are You Talking To? And I forgot that I actually threw a title on this. And I'm going to do this over the next couple of days, maybe um, two or three days. But I'm, I want to I talk to you about fine-tuning your prayer life. Okay? Fine-tuning. Um, cars today um, have so many electronics and all this junk on it that you got to take it to somebody to go work on it. I mean, you could probably change your oil and do stuff, but when it comes to getting into the guts of an engine, you, you got to take it in there because they've got so much plastic and all this mess all over it that you can't even get to it. But the first truck that I had was a Ford F-150 302 Holly four barrel, uh, Mickey Thomas cam covers. I mean, I could get in there and tinker and get around and fine tune the cam and fine tune um, the the four barrel to get it right where I wanted and I, I had a lope on it. What's a I lope? Wish, oh, 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 I hate, I hate hearing a truck go by and it sounds like, my truck, when you cranked it up, seriously, you cranked my truck up and it went, that sounds like something's broken in it. And it's, it sounds broken. I like the smooth. And when you get on the gas, you get on the gas and And when you get going down the road, it's. Is Brian Branham on here yet this morning? And I'm like, yes, Jesus. That's a truck to me. That's Hannah, what a truck is sounds Brian like. on here this okay. morning? I'd love to know his response. Who's the guy in Tishmingo? Is it Tishmingo, Mississippi? Mm -hmm. That brother right there okay. put a cam. It's Pastor Robert Carnathian's son. son put who's a cam? like 22. He put a cam in a brand new Camaro. And I'm talking that thing. It'll make you wet your pants when he cranks it's that so thing. It's so loud. It's, it's, it's maybe a his, girl, his girlfriend's like, I don't even, even <laughs> like going anywhere with him because we can't talk in the car. can't even talk in the car so loud. Anyway. <laughs> Fine tuning means that we're getting precise in some areas, okay? So go with me to Luke chapter 16, um, two scriptures, verse 23 and 24. I'm going to pray ahead uh, because I'm, I'm really going to take it slow, and I'm probably only going to get through verse 23 today, and we'll jump in 24 it's tomorrow. Luke what? Uh, six, no, John. Did I say Luke? You said Luke. John 16, 23, and 24. Somebody said the louder the better. Who was that? 23 through. Who said the louder the better? Because I'm I'm with whoever that is. Erica, my friend from Tampa. Hello, girl. Louder the better. Okay. Father, we love you and praise you. We thank you for a wonderful day that you have given us, Lord, yes. regardless of where we are. Favor goes before us. Blessing chases us down. We thank you, God, that we are listening to you. Yes. We want to hear your word, Father. And we want to speak the word appropriately and we want to do what the word says so that we receive what you have for us and that we are walking in all the provision, all the blessing, all the miracle signs yes. and wonders you have for us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay. John 16 verse 23. Now, you can go back and read and he's making conversation with the disciples. And he's talking about that I've been talking to you through parables. Time's coming where I'm not going to talk to you through parables anymore. Um, when a woman gives birth, she goes through grief and anguish as she's giving birth. But as soon as the birth is over, the pain is over and she is in joy and, and rejoicing in the fact that she gave birth to a, a child. Um um, talks about your heart's rejoicing and take care of that, be in gladness and delight. It says, and when that time comes, you will ask nothing of me. This is Jesus talking. Mm -hmm. You will need to ask me no questions. Now, hold on. Ask nothing of Jesus. He said, I assure you, most assuredly, I tell you that my father will grant you whatever you ask in my name as presenting all that. Here we go. I am the the amplified. Jesus calls himself the I am because he's one with the father. But watch this. He said, do not ask me of anything. Mm -hmm. Ask the father. So let's go here. Jesus said, ask nothing of me. What did he teach the disciples? He taught the disciples how to speak, how to command, how to declare, how to decree. The disciples walked with him <coughs> and saw Jesus lay hands on the sick or speak a word and say, be healed. By faith, be healed. 
He spoke to a demon, come out. And he didn't say, in my name. Now, we are the ones that say, come out in Jesus' name. And we'll get to that here in a minute. But he said, freely you give, freely you receive. Do these things, okay? And greater works you shall do. Do these things. And he's teaching us. And then here he's telling the disciples, do not ask anything of me when I'm gone. When I go, I'm gone. I'm done. Now, here's what Jesus is doing. We understand by the word of God that he is sitting next to the right hand of the Father. He is praying for us. But he has given you an authority. Um, where did I write that down? I know I wrote it somewhere. Okay, let's go here. We have too many Christians today begging Jesus. You hear it in the prayer in the church. You hear it in prayers outside the church. People are begging Jesus to do stuff for them, and he's not doing it. Well, Chris, we've heard you talk about this before. Yeah, but why are you still doing it? Amen. Begging Jesus when he said, do not ask me of nothing. Ask the Father and then do it in my name. Yes. We, you, you know that I, I, I could, there's only one time we ask Jesus of anything? Where? Think about it. What's the one time we ask Jesus for something? Come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. Oh, wow. That's it. Come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. And so after that, we never ask. After that, what are we asking? Oh, okay. How about Lord Jesus baptize me because he's the great baptizer. Baptize okay. me in the Holy Ghost. So we ask him for salvation. We ask him for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Holy Spirit baptism. Okay. But guess what? Everything else. Everything else. He said, ask the Father. Mm -hmm. Do it in my name. And he'll do it for you. We have got to recognize the religious jargon that has been inundated in our minds by listening to other people pray and thinking that their prayers are so spiritual, but they have no fruit to back mm -hmm. it up. Religious jargon has produced a body of schizophrenic so-called Christians. Wow. Schizophrenic. Running around doing stuff that is not biblical. It's not biblical. It's not biblical running around. He said, ask me nothing. Then why are you still praying? Jesus, we need you to come, Jesus. No, he's not coming. Matter of fact, he's not coming till the Father tells him to come. But you have the spirit of the living God living on the inside of you. So you're not asking Jesus to come. You take Jesus with you. I know I've said that many times. That's good. Here's why Jesus said, ask me nothing. John 15, 7. This is why you don't have to ask Jesus anything. John 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Amen. You shall. But you have to abide in him in mm -hmm. order for that to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's where people are like, why are my prayers not being answered? Well, then you can go back to the scripture and see. Where are you going? Give me just a minute. I'm okay. Talking. I got to do Okay. If you go back to the scripture and you see, it's because you're not receiving because you're not abiding. And that's where you have to ask him, what is it? that's in my life, that is keeping me from abiding in him. What is that thing? What is that scenario? What is that situation? What is that um, idol that is before the father? I, I love where Shelley Brown just put, seek first the kingdom. Matthew 6, 33 says, seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And then all these things shall be added unto you. So a lot of the requests that we're making unto the Father, 
we're making unto him or, or we're asking Jesus to do these things, but yet we've not sought God first. We've not sought his kingdom first. And what does it mean to seek the kingdom of God and all his righteousness? It means that he is priority above everything else. He's priority above food. He's priority above television. He's priority above your job, your spouse, your lawn care, your laundry, your animals, your children, the whole thing. He is priority above it all. And then it says, and to seek his righteousness. Well, how do we seek his righteousness? We ask for him to come into us and to make us look like him, for us to be righteous like him, for us to be holy like him. And then we can go back to abide in him, about that abiding in him, because we are to be holy as he is holy. We have got to get out, and, and I love how Chris said it, get out of the religious jargon and the religious motion of all of the words and and the the begging of Jesus. I apologize. When, if you just abide in him and you seek him first above everything else, seek his kingdom and his righteousness. So watch this. John 15, 7. If you abide Amen. in me, and want you to see this, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, mm -hmm. you shall ask what? Whatever. No, 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 look. What's that saying? You're, you will. Whatever you will. Me. And whatever it shall I be will. done unto you. You will. Uh -huh. We're so religious. We're so religious. Okay, God, what's your will for my life? What's your will for my life? I'm going to give it to you. Very simple. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your spirit. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's not difficult. This is God's will for the abiding. Is to provide for you your will. Yes. Your wants and your desire. I'm not, I'm not making this up. This is scripture. If you <coughs> abide in me and my words abide in you, yes. you shall ask what you will. We don't teach that. Because if I'm abiding in him, I'm not asking anything outside of his will. I'm in his will because I'm abiding in him. And then anything that I ask is his will. Amen. Lord, I declare healing. Because I abide in you and you abide in me. It's my will. And because it's your will and you want it done, I shall do it. Now do it in this. Do it in my son's name. Yes. In Jesus' name. Lord, I want to be financially debt free. Because you abide in me and you abide in my word. It means you do everything my word tells you to do when it comes to your finances. Your tithe and your offerings. Because you're doing it correctly and you're abiding in me and I'm abiding in you. Because of your will to be financially debt free, it is now my will to make you financially debt free. Now do it in my son's name. Amen. Are we seeing this? Amen. Fine tune your prayer life. I love it. Quit begging Jesus. I know he's not frustrated, but I'm, I, I think of it sometimes. It's like, why are these people still up here trying to ask me to do stuff when all I said was go to the Father? And then do it in my name. That's what he said for you to do. I assure you, verse 23, most solemnly, I tell you, that my father will grant you whatever you ask in my name as presenting all that I am. Yeah. Get the religious jargon out of your prayer life. Cut it out. Really be attentive and paying attention to how you pray. Really be attentive, paying attention to how you pray. Because how you pray is going to determine what it is that you have. And abiding in Jesus, abiding in the Father, okay? He just told us, ask what you want. Amen. And it shall be done unto you. Key here.
What's the key? Abiding. You cannot ask for what you want and not be abiding. But when you're abiding, you can ask for anything. And it shall be done unto you. When you pray, Jesus said, pray our Father. Now, what if somebody says, Lord Jesus? Lord means Father. Okay? Jesus is God. We understand that people can say certain things. So don't get hung up on what somebody's saying. They're praying to the Father, Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, if I'm commanding or declaring and decreeing in the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm doing the name. Father, I'm asking you, as I abide in your word and your word abides in me, your word says that I shall ask whatever I will and it shall be done unto me. Amen. And Jesus said, time is coming. Don't ask me of nothing. I assure you, I will tell you, ask my father and he will grant whatever you ask in my name. Amen. Now there's more to this, but I really felt like I needed to focus on this part right here. Fine tune your prayer life. Mm -hmm. Catch yourself. Catch yourself. Ask the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit. Show me if when I pray, I'm if I'm religious. Show me if I'm just saying things because I've heard other people say them. Mm -hmm. Or am I praying <coughs> because it's what you've acquired of me to pray? Amen? Hallelujah. That's what I have today. Hallelujah. Amen. I know there's many of you that have already said that you love this word, you needed this word. If this word is for you, let us know. Inbox us, send us a prayer request, comment here. We want to mix our faith with you and agree with you to declare on your behalf. Um, also, hear from the Holy Spirit today. So into this kingdom assignment. Um, whenever God does a work, you want to sow into that work. If it is stirring you, if it is discipling you, if it is growing you, if it is maturing you, you want to have seed in that ground. Let me say something. We, um, this Sunday we were at church and they were having a, uh, offering for the pastors, mm -hmm. a Christmas offering for the pastors. And... They had other people get up and say it. And I thought about it. I said, how do you, how do you talk to people about a Christmas offering for Chris Brooks Ministries? But we don't have anybody to say it but me and you. <laughs> so all we have is the fruit of who we are and yeah. what we do. But I'm going to just tell you, the Lord said, what would you want somebody to do for you for Christmas? And I'm going to get... That's the word for you today. That's what the word, that's what the Lord asked of us. <laughs> and we're going to ask the same thing of you. What we want you to sow today. <laughs> so hilariously today. What? Ask the Holy Spirit. <laughs> what would you want someone to bless you financially with today? Whatever that amount is, sow into Chris Works Ministries. I, I love how the Lord turns it sow around. Sow that. On me. Lord, sow that. Lord, what, today. Lord, what do what do what do what should I what do I need to sow into the pastors for Christmas? He goes, What would you want somebody to sow into you? I'm like, You're gonna do this again? He goes, Yeah. And they turned to me and showed me what she did. She goes, This okay? And I said, I think so. And then she sewed it and I prayed and the Lord goes, That ain't enough, and you know it's mm -hmm. not. He said, Add a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> so we did. <coughs> we did. We added it this past Sunday for the pastors mm -hmm. for Christmas. I want my pastors blessed. I want them to have a good Christmas. And let me I say remember, this. let me say I, I have to say don't this. Have we want our pastors blessed. I know you want your pastors blessed. But if the PWOD, the discipleship of Chris Burke's ministries, the revivals, the conferences, blesses you in any way, then you should want us blessed. You should want to sow seed into fertile ground. If you have not sowed yet into this ministry, you need to sow today. And, uh, so we have nobody else to come and sit here like the church did and had like a bunch of elders and talk about why you should do it. 
I'm just going to be up front. I'm going to be blunt like I always am, and so is Davey. And we're going to ask you, if you want to bless this house because of the blessing we've been over you and your family for the past year, and you want to bless this ministry for Christmas, sow a Christmas seed. Amen? Amen. That's it. I'm just going to be straight up. Sow a Christmas seed today. See what God does in your life and your family for Christmas. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that is a Holy Ghost inspired <laughs> word. And that's and we, for someone. We did it, man. What, and we hear we testimony. Did it, we did it cheerfully. Yes. We see testimony and hear testimony after testimony of everyone that is sowed into CBM as fertile ground. So cool. The multiplication that takes place, not only financially, but with prodigals coming home, with physical healing, with restoration, with jobs, my gosh, with promotions. Let me just tell you this real quick, okay? Because I saw this on social media um, the other day from a lady who got completely transformed in one of our services about two or three years ago. Oh, yeah. um, I'm not going to tell you the cities or anything like that. However, we were in a particular city and there was a demonic manifestation at the altar before Chris actually started preaching the service. Long story short, because there's it's a lengthy process to this, she was delivered and set free in that instant, in that moment. By um, this ministry. By Chris Brooks Ministries. Just and, get that out there. Yes. And she ended up staying as a part of that week-long revival. She came into every single service. She was in worship. She was in the altar. She was free, completely free. Then we come back like three to six months later. I can't recall. She didn't even look can't physically even the same. Her. She did not even physically look the same. She came up to us. She said, do you remember who I am? We said, no. She said, well, you're not going to believe this. Whenever I came in, I had no job. I had no money. I was demonically possessed. Clearly, there was a whole bunch of garbage going on in her life. And she said, now I have a job at said location, and I am one of the managers. Well, then we come back another three to six months later, and she said, you're not going to believe this. She said, oh, my gosh, I'm not just the manager of that one store. I'm a manager over five stores. Hold up, it gets better. So she's sitting there and she it's gives- Parable of the talents. She gives them the offering. She said, I said, she starts just dumping money and then she comes to our book table and she just starts, I'm not even kidding you, just throwing cash at me. I said, sister, you can stop. She goes, no, you don't understand. I'm free. I wouldn't have my salvation. I wouldn't have freedom in my mind and I wouldn't be a manager to have the income that I have had it not been for your ministry. Now, three years later, what'd you just see? So yesterday, here I am. She tagged me on this on social media. She is manager of the year over like 15 stores and go, holy biscuits, the Lord finances out the wazing, multiplication out the wazing, what the Holy Ghost is doing in and through this woman so because crazy. of the obedience of Chris Works Ministries. And let me say this, when you partner with this kingdom assignment, you are linking arms with us. You are linking with us to see his kingdom advance. Whatever credit is due us is also due you because Ooh. you have partnered with this assignment. Maybe on fire. So I'm just going to tell you right now, don't miss this opportunity today. Don't wait till tomorrow. If you've got to get your spouse on the phone as soon as this live is over or the replay, you get them on the phone. You hear from the Holy Ghost and you do it before midnight tonight. You hear from Almighty God. Obey the Holy Ghost. We're not asking you to do any more or any less than what the Holy Ghost is asking of you to do. And many of you have already sowed before, but you may not have sowed the full amount of what it was he asked you to sow. Do it today. Do it on our website. And let me say this. Here's why I want you to do it on our website. Yes, you can send a check to, to the link or the address that's provided. But I'm going to tell you right now, our, our postal manager... I literally got something in the mail yesterday that was sent to me early November. 
The male is extremely behind, especially for our area. They are short staffed. And was it November 15th or something? Like November that? 15th, and I just got it yesterday. And a lot of mail is not even arriving for people. So go to our website. I'm short staffed. You can do a check on the website, you can do a debit card on the website, or you can do a credit card on the website. There is a very small percentage of a processing fee. You can cover it, not cover it. It's totally left up to you. But hear from the Holy Ghost. ChrisBrooksMinistries.com forward slash partner. The link is in the bio as well as the link is in the comments. Go back and watch this. Fine tune your prayer life. I don't have to say anything else. God's good. <laughs> we love you. Love you.